Welcome to the Substream.com's first episode of Lighting Basics. I'm Mike, and I'm getting over the flu, so I apologize for the quality of my voice, and I'm going to be lighting my friend Ryo using a very simple, very basic, and very common way to light for drama called Rembrandt lighting. Unsurprisingly, Rembrandt lighting is named after Rembrandt van Rijn, who, aside from being tied with Van Gogh for the title of Best Dutch Painter of All Time, is known for using neat, low-key lighting effects in his portraits. In most of them, part of his subject's face is thrown into shadow, but not completely, as some detail remains. This has led art history dudes to speculate on how Rembrandt had his studio set up, a row of windows above eye level letting sunlight in onto a subject's face while a white wall opposite reflects the light back and fills in some of the shadows. Anyway, if you're more interested, you can go and research this stuff to your heart's content. I'm more interested in the practical applications. In cinematography, Rembrandt lighting is defined as a lighting setup that produces a triangle of light under one of your subject's eyes. That's it, that's all, if there's a triangle formed by the shadow of a dude or dudette's nose under their eye, it's Rembrandt. Once you see the triangle once, you'll see it everywhere if you start paying attention to lighting, as uh, it's everywhere. It's a really handy thing to be able to create, as it looks good on most people and it's not very hard to do, and can give your images some depth as the shadows on your actor's faces, or to get fancy, the chiaroscuro, the interplay between light and dark, will help with modeling, which, well, take our word for it, will make your compositions more engaging and more compelling. You can technically create this kind of lighting with one light and a reflector, but most people do it with two, and we're going to use a third light just for fun. It all starts with the key light, which in our case is a 500 watt Lowell Omni light, naked, up and to our model's right. This is the light that's going to create the shadows, and it's also the light that's going to be used to determine the exposure of the shot. As you can see, we've got some pretty intense chiaroscuro going on, but the shadows are so dark that it looks kind of distracting, so we're going to lighten them up. We'll do that with a second Omni, which is going to serve as our fill light. Naked, the light just blasts the other side of the face and all of the modeling, all of the shadows that show the contours of handsome Ryo's face and help to give it depth, just disappear. So what we do is throw on a bunch of diffusion and a couple of neutral density gels to reduce both the intensity and the hardness of the light. Now we're seeing something close to what Rembrandt kept painting. Generally speaking, and this is kind of counterintuitive, so listen close, but generally speaking, you want to favor this shadowed side of the face when you're shooting. Light the far side of the face, especially if you're looking for drama. What remains is to transform our Rembrandt setup into a standard three light setup. We're going to put a third light, a Lowell Tota, behind Ryo, shooting towards the camera. What this will do, hopefully, is rim Ryo's unlit shoulder and hair with a little bit of light, again providing some chiaroscuro and helping to pick him out from the dark background. It's that simple, really. You can do it with one bright lamp and a piece of white cardboard, or the sun and a reflector. Key, fill, and if you like, a backlight. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, head over to our forums and ask away. And the first person to name a film that successfully used Rembrandt lighting will win a donut that I'll mail to their house.